Hey guys, just give everyone a second to join. How's everyone doing today? Can you guys all hear me okay? Alrighty, so I'm gonna be going live with my friend Danelle. We did gymnastics together for a very long time. And so I'm very excited that he's gonna be joining me. Just give me a second to... Hi, Natalie. Okay. Hello. Hey <laughs> yes. there. How are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing really well. You look I so love... good. Oh, thank oh, you. Great. Thank you. I love the earring, so cool. Thank you, thank you. Very, very cool. I have um, this one, which I really love. Cool. Little if, I ever, if I ever see you in person and you're wearing that, I just, fair warning, I'm going to steal it. Just you're saying. Just Are you saying. really? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, so <laughs> fun. I like having, I love the look of like, I just have a simple one here and then I'll just have like funky ones on one side. Oh, there, there you go. Do yeah. you, I literally it might be when we play back the live i had one that was like what's like the clip on ones and it fell oh, off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, actually really funny I, but I like i have these two are real piercings and then i'll just like play around and put fake ones on because i oh, i'm like a baby and i'm afraid it's gonna hurt so much i mean it will hurt but i mean you know it's gonna look good so you might as well and then i think about too like when i in like 50 years am i gonna want like the holes right here, I don't know. I mean, who cares about you know fifty years? I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. How are you, Ali? I feel like I haven't seen you in a really long time. I know. When was the last time we saw each other? I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea because I don't. Th I mean, tour maybe. No. I don't know. Oh no, wait. No, no. I've seen you in LA a couple of times when you were living. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, of course. I saw you a couple of times. Um, are you, where are you in the world right now? In Miami. In Miami. Very cool. Are you in How's Boston? I am in Boston. In Boston. Boston. Yeah. Matt, pack the caps. Have yeah. you been to Boston before besides the tour? Um, I don't think I have actually. Mm -hmm. mm. And I've never even. Awesome. And it looks like. That? But it's it looks not. great. Well, yeah, but it looks, sometimes when I drink it, people are like, it looks like pee. So just letting you guys know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's just mean. I mean, it's really good, but it does, I mean, actually, this would be very dehydrated pee. Yes, very dehydrated. It's green tea. <laughs> I love green tea. All right, let's see how everyone's today. Who's on here? A somebody lot of said, people. Somebody said that they love you in Spanish. Oh, I'm sure mm -hmm. they were talking to you. No, no, they said te amo, oh. Ali. So, That's yeah. Need hairstylist yeah. in area. New to mass. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said it does look like Pete. <laughs> Ask how is Milo doing? He's sleeping right now. He's really good. He's really oh sweet. Your dog is so cute. That is the it, cutest dog. Of, yeah. yeah. Jesus. He has been... Um, just so great for my mental health. I love him so much. It's so crazy how in such a short time you come to love your dog so much. Yeah. Like I, you get so immensely attached. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a dog? I do. She's laying right next to me. So it's so is my, isn't it just the sweetest? What's her name? Yeah. Kiki. Oh, how old? She just turned two in May, actually. Oh, when's her birthday? I have no idea. I just know that it's in May. <laughs> She's a rescue, so I just know some, at some point in May. Oh, that's awesome. Um, did you rescue her when she was a puppy? Yeah, she was like four months old when I got her. Um, yeah, Milo uh, is a rescue, too. He was three months. But they it's interesting. They don't know anything about his parents, anything. The only backstory that they know from him is that he came from Tennessee, and his birthday is July 16th. But they don't know, oh. like, how oh, someone found him or anything like right. that. And I've ask them because I want to know just because I'm curious and um yeah it's interesting he also has like a good amount of anxiety so I'm kind of curious if that's just him or mm. it's because of his experiences because I got him pretty early but I do feel bad yeah. sometimes he is a little yeah. bit anxious 
but he reminds me of myself. I'm like, I get it, buddy. So I feel like we're a good team. <laughs> I like, I totally get it. It's like, you know, I try to I, help him. Yeah. Your dog have anxiety? Oh God, so much. She's, it's funny because I got her so that she could be my emotional support animal. And I feel like I'm more her emotional support animal than she is mine, but that's fine. I but love does Kind of, is it sort of healing to help something or an animal? Heal yeah. To oh, no, absolutely. And and believe it or not, she, there was actually one point uh, last year um, <clears throat> where I can't remember what it was that I was doing, but something happened and like, I like immediately started having a panic attack and I literally like, went to the corner, and I, like crouched down and I was like trying to breathe and she came over and like started licking my face and just like sat with me and I was like, like it, it made me stop immediately. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So sweet. No. So sweet. At what age did you feel like she started to be more aware of how you were feeling? Because I don't think Milo's there yet. <laughs> how old is he, though? He's 10 months, but it's so funny. A lot of my friends will say the same thing. Like, if they're having a tough time, they'll come over. I mean, he's pretty attached to me as it is anyways, but yeah. I've had certain <laughs> situations where I was, like, really sick, and he's just, like, in his own world. But he was he, um, maybe, like, five months, so he was probably... Yeah at that time but i am yeah. curious I, I mean he's helped me so much like something about oh he actually has my earring that fell so i need to go grab it one second <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't need that that's that's the that's the joy of having a puppy is this is the little earring um <laughs> he was playing it's like he still puts everything and anything into his mouth so i have oh, to yeah. kind of he's still so puppy. and the thing is believe it or not the fact that he's a he's a male dog it like he'll be in that puppy phase for longer because <laughs> like for whatever reason you know girl dogs they're just smarter and like, really it happens it happens in in humans too you know what i mean they just mature a little quicker a little smarter just I, didn't happens. Know, I did not know that was like there was a difference between male and female dogs that's really interesting they're just like males are just like more like woo -woo, and they just like play around way more and then females are just like become like more attentive quicker you know yeah the one thing that has been a struggle is he will bite his leash when i walk him all the time it's so interesting when you have a puppy he does that yes but then he, he's like for months he stopped doing it and then he starts doing it again it's like you go forward <laughs> and then 10 steps back and then but it's like you just kind of i mean i love him so much i don't care i just yeah. like can yeah. you trust the dog to be off leash oh yeah 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 she oh. i've taught her to be pretty good with it <laughs> so fast i i have like yeah. the main bolt of dogs like i'm serious he is he is so fast that it, it's incredible like i and i feel like i'm pretty fast and i you can't catch I, him really it's like really impressive he's extremely athletic and really strong yeah. and i don't i don't know i'm too scared i'm working on it <laughs> uh my mom is here and she says hi by the way oh she says, I was gonna ask you about her. How is she's, she? She's watching the live. Yeah, oh. she said she said that she that you, that oh. you look beautiful. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, I saw your mom in Australia a couple of years ago. I know. She was so excited. She was so happy to see you. She was like, "Oh my god, I saw Allie," and she like ran up to me and she said hi and she asked me for a picture and I was like, "Yeah, that sounds like Allie," you know. <laughs> Do I remember? Yeah. I remember I was wearing a blue sweater. I remember it. I don't know how I do, but I remember it. <laughs> she said, she said, yes. Um, yes. A couple questions, guys. Let's see what kind of questions people have. Uh, Somebody said, Ali, would you ever do a podcast on anxiety? Oh, it's a great question. I've thought about doing podcasts before, for sure. Um, I have so much respect for people that have podcasts because it is – um, I imagine it's extremely challenging and it's, it's uh, from what I hear from people, it's like a full-time job. Yeah. Um, so if I were to do it, um, I would want to make sure that I could really treat it like a full-time job. So I've definitely thought about it, but I, mm -hmm. um, and I'm very passionate about <clears throat> talking about mental health and yeah. um, helping people who have been through stuff. I think at this point, I'm still um, working so much on my own healing that I feel like I've yeah. learned a lot about myself and learning about different anxiety and traumas from people I've connected with. So I feel like it's almost too early for me because I want to wait a little bit until I have more knowledge, but I have totally talked about it, thought about it. 
I listen to podcasts a lot. I find them extremely helpful for me in my journey and whether I'm listening to about like, you know, food and um, nutrition or mental health or just learning about like, you know, just different, different topics, or if it's just like funny podcasts, I love them. Um, And I have a lot of respect for them, but they are so much work. So I want to make sure that when I do it, I do it the right way. What about you? I I was doing a podcast and, and you're absolutely right. You know, like, and I decided to only do it once a week. The thing is, you know, I was doing, I was doing a video podcast as well. So, you know, I, I was literally doing everything completely by myself. So it became really difficult. Like it took up like four or five days out of my, out of my week, you know, and, and I stopped doing it because I signed with, with a new agent and stuff. And I was getting like way more auditions and I signed with a voiceover agent and stuff. And I was getting uh, like different kinds of auditions and stuff. And just, I was doing a lot of different things and it just like didn't have time. And I, I want to dedicate a good amount of time to it so that it can actually have yeah. uh, quality content. But I feel like if you don't have a team of people that are helping you, then it's just like, like you said, it, it it's, that's all you need to be focusing on. And it's just, that's just not what I want to do. You know, like I'm, I'm focusing so heavily on, on acting and I have been for the past like four and a half years now <laughs> that if at some point I, I, achieve so like the level of success where i i can have a team of people to like help me out then i'll continue it but mm-hmm. as of right now i just like don't really see myself doing that right now. Mm-hmm. yeah it's also it's not only just the hour that you're interviewing yeah. it's all of the research it's like learning a lot about that person like i also even think about when i go on like a talk show let's say someone's promoting yeah. a book, you have to think yeah. about like they're reading that person's book that comes on they're researching and they're also researching like who else to have on i mean there's so much that goes into it i i think so much about um you know i i have a great relationship with hoda on the today show and i just think anyone who's on a morning show or any type of media where they're on every single day i have the utmost respect because they just have to be on all of the time but they're also constantly having to learn new things keep up with yeah. so different topics it's pretty um incredible and i also it's overwhelming think, for sure yeah it's it's really impressive it's it's truly like imagine every morning having to be up on a morning show <laughs> i mean they wake up so early and you just have to be Dude. so on and it just it's it just is really incredible and i don't think they get the credit that they deserve but yeah. even th- like podcasts are so popular as well and that was sort of Mm -hmm. something i was thinking about of like how do i differentiate what's already out there and make unique and i think that's also an interesting challenge um well i think that you yourself you already have enough enough stories that are like immensely unique and and your story is incredible you know and you've gone through so many different things and so many amazing uh, times and 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 situations and i'm sure you have so many anecdotes that it would be like easier in that aspect for you to to actually make like a successful podcast also you're ali raisman dude like you're you're an absolute legend you know like how can you not think that people would want to listen to what you have to say um but but i no i completely agree and then to touch back on the morning show like hosts that's also having to consider like when sometimes you know something goes wrong and they mm-hmm. they can't like just lose it and just be like ah whatever i'm out they have to like oh no everything's perfectly fine and they have to like maintain this almost like a character because they could be fired so so easily so quickly you know so yeah i agree with you 100 percent um will you tell me a little bit about your acting of course yeah i um I like I said I signed with with an agent in in December and you know we have a really really good relationship they they they're they've been around for a while now and they they rep some pretty pretty big people um I've been getting some like really really good auditions I actually got an audition for um I got an audition for like a Disney show that I went like almost like all the way to the end the only problem is that they were looking some, for like something very specific and they were just like, we loved him. He was great. He was one of our favorites. Just unfortunately, they're looking for like this specific thing. But it felt better to, to hear that than to just be like, ah, he's not good enough, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, That's yeah, awesome. I, though. 
It's yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 I was very excited about that. Um, I filmed, I actually filmed a, um, it was like just a small part in an episode of, of a show that's on Hulu is actually going to be coming out pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Like next, next week. Um, it's called love Victor. And I was really excited cause that was like my, my first like really big, mm -hmm. uh, acting role. Um, yeah. And then a couple things in the pipeline and, part of this podcast it's like a it's like a um it's like if it was like a serial podcast if it was like a show but like just over podcast and that's really fun that's coming out at some point um cool. yeah really excited very cool so how has your gymnastics career with preparation helped you yeah. prepare for your auditions do you go a similar way at all the mentality i honestly no like I, it prepared me to understand that like I'm allowed to live life and do the things that I want to do mm -hmm. and enjoy myself and still be as successful as I want to be. I The only thing that I've really taken from my time as a gymnast was the work ethic, you know, like, because mm -hmm. I think that's ingrained in us so heavily that like we just, in anything we decide to do, we're just going to work at it harder than anybody else in the world. And um, that's really been the the biggest thing. Everything else I've I've done completely different. Like I'm sure, I'm sure you've had, or when you were a gymnast, you had like so many superstitions. I know I did, and yeah. a lot of them were like they were really kind of um, they would almost like hinder me, my performances sometimes. So I've made sure to try and get rid of them completely. Which in is my easier? Real life. Yeah, oh God! Oh my God! What about yeah. What about dealing with criticism, though? Because in gymnastics, we are used yeah. to being unique. That's the sport. And we're always striving for that perfection. So has that helped you? Because I feel like I've heard from yeah. some of the actresses that you are critiqued. Well, they'll say, say it this way or do it this way. Or that was little yeah. to this. Has that helped you not be like be able to take it um, less yeah. personal? Yeah, 100 percent. That's good. And that's I think the other thing that I have kind of going for me is that like, you know, a lot of people aren't really used to that. And they, they'll be like, hey, that wasn't very good. You know, you should do it again. People will be like, oh, well, oh. but like for us, we, we'll just be like, okay. And then we just go and we do it. You know, like we're just so, so used to that specific, like the critiquing and just being like, that was bad. Do it again. We're just like, yes, you got, you got it. You know? So that, yeah. that's been another thing that's been very helpful as well. Do you have specific superstitions before you competed? Oh my God. I had so many of them, dude. I, I didn't so yeah, I mean, uh, specifically with like chalking up and stuff like that. And, and I used to have, there was one point in my career where it was like taking over so much that it was like, I had to make sure that the uh, the chalk bucket that they provided was like in a very specific spot. <laughs> There's the baby. Seba. How old? So, he's like two. So the chalk bucket had to be in a very specific spot. And when it wasn't in it, like I would freak out because of course, like everybody else was also going and like, the, you know, they would put it in a more convenient spot for them, for everybody. And I'd be like, Ugh. so instead what? I tried to like, huh? sorry, I was going to say, sorry to interrupt. Was this at a competition or in training? Yeah, no, in competitions. Like I, I remember the, the one time I noticed that I was like, okay, this is, this is too much. Was at a world cup. And, and I like kept putting it and people kept moving it. And I was like, Ugh! so, I decided to just like buy my own chalk bucket and then mm. be able to control that, you know, then I had it and I would go everywhere. And like, I, you know, I would do things a very specific way, but it was a, uh, God, it would take so much of my life, you know, like even walking into airplanes for the longest time, I had to like specifically walk with the same foot, you know, like ridiculous. So yeah. over the top. Yeah. It's How about you? Well, it's interesting. You mentioned the word control because that I think so much of, uh, for me personally is like being able to control a situation because I think yeah. with gymnastics, even though we're using our own body, I think there's still so much that sometimes can feel out of control. And oh, yeah. maybe a lot of people don't realize is even if you like blink at the wrong time or your timing is just like a millisecond off, it can yeah. mess thing or, you know, it's yeah. just every single arena or, or different place that you compete in the equipment feels different. It is different. Yeah. And so it's just everything is all about timing and feeling it. And sometimes you just feel so off. And so 
out of control. So I've actually reflected a lot in the last couple of months and I didn't realize how much of the control I needed and stuff. And so I'm on that today. But when I was like around 10 years old, my friends would knock on wood and they'd like knock on their head. And so I would sort of doing that because everyone was doing it. And at first it yeah. was like fun. And we, it was like a cool thing when I was younger. And then I think I got a little bit more like OCD about it where I'd have to like yeah. knock on good stuff. Or if I had like a bad thought in my head, I'd like, it would just be, yeah. and it all stemmed around gymnastics and just being nervous about yeah. falling a mistake. And it was just this, like this idea <laughs> of perfect all the time. And I didn't really recognize until recently that it's a form of OCD of just like this obsessive worrying and thinking, obsessive thinking about like not messing up or not having, not making a mistake or yeah. not just people because the whole sport is kind of surrounded by people's approval. Yes. So I found actually though that uh, I'm curious what you think about this is when I became more aware of it, it's like mm -hmm. kind of hard to be like, Oh wow, this is a problem. Yeah. You have that able to get, feel better and find things to help you and get tools to help you? Like, would you say when you realize at that World Cup that it was a problem, it's like in that moment you realize yeah. it's a problem, but you can't do anything about it in that moment. So it kind yeah. of feels like not a good feeling, right? Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. And it's and it's exactly what you were talking about. You know, it's like it's having a, a situation where you can't find any control. You try and you try and find it anywhere, you know, and you try to do anything to, to have some sense of control. and the moment where you have to realize that you have to relinquish that control to actually be able to like be free and move forward is like terrifying. Cause you're like, no, I can't, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's something I work on. Um, I mean, I work on it every day. I think it's like just yeah. having that is really important. And I've also found, and this is so much easier said than done is if I'm having a moment where like my mom used to, or still does, like always would worry if we would go to a gymnastics trip, we were driving somewhere. She'd be like, I don't know if I shut the stove off. I don't know if I shut the oven off. And I do the same thing now. And yeah. so I've kind of realized that I, it's also comes down to also being so in my head that I'm actually not being present when I'm shutting the stove off. Yeah. And so it's actually be more present in my everyday life where if I'm doing something, I know I'm not going to go back and check because I'm like, okay, I'm shutting this off. I'm present. Like yeah. I've spoken before that's like I have so much anxiety that I don't even remember if I showered, let alone yeah. wash my hair or wash my body. Because you're so and, in your own head, yeah. Yeah, it's just so I, I think it's so – it's also – it's a normal thing. Maybe there's people listening on here who can relate, maybe some that don't, but yeah. that's also okay. Not everyone's the same, and we don't all have the same battles and struggles. But mm. I've learned like being aware <laughs> of it, kind to yourself and saying – other people have this, like, I'm going to, how can I talk to myself the way that I would talk to my friends or even like the, the two year old that's with you in your house right now, like, you would never say the things that you probably say to yourself. Yeah. You hundred percent. Yeah. So I try to think about it that way. And when we're kinder to ourselves, we are able to, I think, get better quicker. I think it makes her, cause I don't yeah. know if we, no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's exactly what you were saying, you know? And, and it's like, it's amazing that, that you're saying how how you you have to almost remind yourself to be present because uh, a lot of people don't realize that you know like a lot of people don't realize like how just how occupying <clears throat> having that level of anxiety can be you know where you, you kind of go through your day and then you're like at the end of the day you're just like what did you, what did I even do today like what you know so being able to <clears throat> being able to be present and being able to at least be aware of it is definitely the very first step to understanding like, okay, now what, you know, mm -hmm. because if you, if you don't know, if you're not aware, then you, you can't make a change. And I feel yeah. like that's for me. I don't know if you, if you have been to therapy, I'm pretty sure you have, I think we talked about this, yeah. but like therapy for me has literally been super amazing specifically because of that, because really all that they taught me was how to, do my my like the comprehensive thinking and like just on my own and, mm -hmm. and it's pretty amazing yeah i was gonna ask you what have you found to be really helpful because i feel like from my perspective there's not a ton of tools out there to yeah. go from feeling like we're talking about to actually putting it to action and feeling better so what have you found that has helped you with those superstitions 
Um, <clears throat> I kind of, I kind of actively go against any thought of mine where I, if I, if I, if I feel myself being like, okay, well, you did this last time and it went well, so maybe we should do it again. I do the opposite of it, you know? And it's mm. like, and it's terrifying because it's like, you're just like, oh no. But I started doing it because after, after I retired, I started playing soccer a lot. And, you know, one day I would have a really great game. And like the next time I would go to play, I would try and find like the same shorts. And I was like, what are you doing, man? Like the shorts had nothing to do with it at all. So I had to, I have to just like actively be, go against what my brain is like telling me it's like oh this is comfortable we should we should do this um and, and it's, when, been, it's been super helpful and when you would actively go against it did you feel this like pit in your stomach or in your chest where <laughs> it's so wrong yeah for yeah in the beginning for sure in the beginning i was like ah! and it was it's like hard it's hard not to do the thing Art. But at, the more you do it, the, it just becomes, it's just natural. And then your body just kind of like forgets about it, you know? And I found also the more you talk about it, like the fact that we're talking about this and we both have experienced similar things, the more yeah. you really, even though it's so hard, it's yeah. other people feel the same way. Yes. And so I've just found talking about it and putting it out there and like telling my friend that I'm with of worrying, like even with Milo, when I first got him, it, when I first started leaving him, in the house alone, I would be so nervous. And I would, <laughs> with a friend, I would, I would say like, I'm so nervous right now. You just talk about it. And it's nice to sometimes just have someone calm yeah. you down. And, yeah. and it's imagining, uh, realizing that sometimes anxiety is just completely made up in our head. Like we create these yeah. scenarios. It's my body feels that it's actually happening. Yeah, It's interesting. Like I've had therapists tell me that our bodies don't know the difference between like being in real true danger versus yeah for this Instagram live, you know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. really fascinating. Um, I've also had someone else tell me that to take emotions and anxiety and different feelings as feedback. And oh, when it, interesting. of anxiety, instead of realize, instead of feeling like it's taking over you and it's you and it's defining you, that she says to think about, like, ask yourself, like, why am I feeling this way? Um, what can I do to help myself and how can I be kinder to myself in this moment? And That's I think that's interesting. helpful is, is like when I'm having a moment, even of like feeling sad or anxious, I say, this isn't me. This is just mm -hmm. a moment going to pass. Even if I feel like this for a few days or a few hours, yeah. I'm going to say this if, one moment of anxiety or sadness doesn't mean this is going to be my life. So yeah. trying to figure out, what is this feeling coming from and taking it as like feedback. So like, let's say, cause I think we all have certain things that trigger us or bother us. Like some yeah. people are driving. How many yeah. times have people honking and, and getting so upset about stuff or sometimes even I've seen like when I'm going to the grocery store and there's a bunch of parking spots open yeah. or there's like a few spots open and somebody goes in front of someone else that was waiting in line for the spot. Right. And the other, getting in this massive huge fight <laughs> thinking there's going to be another spot open in like a minute and i just That's always <laughs> is that you, you... <laughs> i get so mad <laughs> really but, I, see, but I... here's why here's why this is why i get really upset in moments like that and it's because <clears throat> i try and live my life to to like a, a certain level I, I hold myself to a really high standard of like being very conscious of being very considerate because it's actually a very easy thing to do to be a considerate human being. And then when I see somebody not be considerate, that's when I'm like, Arr! but yeah. no, I, I understand what you I mean. Guess, I guess I'll challenge you to think about it like this. You know how we were talking about how sometimes it's so hard to be present. Yeah. Yeah. What if that person is so in their own mind with anxiety, maybe they just found out someone that they love has, has cancer or something. And they just yeah. got, maybe they got fired from their job and like, they don't even register that that happened. Like there's some times where if I'm being totally honest, there's sometimes where I'm so in my own head, if I like order a coffee, like 30 minutes later, I'm like, oh my God, did I even like say thank you? Like, I don't remember. <laughs> and I'm sure I did because it's like ingrained in me to say thank yeah. you. But that's the stuff that gives me anxiety is like, I always, same with you. I always try to be a considerate and kind person, but that's yeah. the stuff where I'm like, I don't even remember. Did I say thank you? Did I make eye contact? Like sometimes you're just <laughs> in your own head that it's like, 
there are certain people out there that may be that do have bad intentions, but I do want to believe that most people are just dealing with so much anxiety yeah. and trauma that they might just, they might, it could be something where like a few days later, they're like, I didn't even realize I cut someone off. You know, like, has that ever happened? You're like, I literally didn't even realize. I, like, yes, and, yes and no. Just because. And I actually, think I've been therapy where I'm like, I just have so much empathy for that. <laughs> I think you're just such a kind you've always been such a sweet and kind human and it's like there's I, your there's your proof or like you know I think it's just a silly thing when I look at that and I'm like guys why are you fighting about that there's gonna be yeah. another but I yeah. think um it's just recognizing though if it like so it's interesting like let's say something happens and it's a, it's something like that and it and you have this massive reaction in your body yeah um, I've been told to take it as like feedback of like, why yeah. am I feeling this way? And, and recognizing it's not just about that incident. It's like when there's like, when there's like a relationship and someone's really upset because their partner didn't do the laundry and they like freak out about it. And yeah. my therapist will say, it's not necessarily about laundry. It's the feeling behind it of like, it's, it's the meaning that they give to it of like, is it that they don't feel heard? Is it they don't feel understood? Yeah. Is the other yeah. person cares about them or yeah um, it's always some underlying reason underlying yeah. that's what's really interesting to me is so i try to do that for myself is when i'm feeling anxious like you know if i if i take something personally i'm like okay what am i making this mean am i making it mean that i feel like i'm not good enough yeah. that i this person doesn't like me like why am i feeling this way and why am i yeah. feeling self-conscious and then i try to do the work on that and it has been like that has been the biggest thing that has helped me is like any I feel anxious if I can I will write in my journal and sometimes it's multiple times a day I can't write in my journal multiple times a day sometimes I'm on an airplane sometimes I'm doing an Instagram live or something but I really when I can I in my head I try to think why am I having such a big reaction to this because this is not it's not the laundry that's upsetting me it's not right. the cutting me off what is it and then I've realized slowly over time I get less the things that used to really stress me out are slowly getting a little bit better. And it's like That's the awesome. best because it doesn't happen overnight, the change, but when you slowly oh, yeah. see it, like just in moments where it just is such a great feeling. So those are the things that have really helped me is just being super aware of how I feel. And someone once told me uh, being <laughs> a blessing and a curse, because when you're aware, you can change things and you can get better. But then before you're in that moment of like being able to feel like you're changing things and empowered to like take control of yourself and feel like you're on the right path. It's so frustrating when you're like, well, I feel miserable right now. Like when right. you feel more of like <laughs> to you, you know, or more aware of sure. feeling and really piss me off. And I feel miserable right now where I just try to like really reflect a lot. So it's really interesting, but I try to try to remember like anxiety or sadness or anger is not me. Sure. And like, just something that I'm making it in my mind. If that makes Does that make sense. It, uh, yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great yeah. way. Honestly, it's a really great way to think about it. I'm, I'm certainly gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try. It, <laughs> it might be a little difficult, but I'm gonna try it. I um, will. I mean, I'm obviously by no means an expert at all. But if you ever want to chat about it, just give me a call because I really enjoy. It's so interesting to think about. Always. always next time next time you are at the grocery store or you're somewhere and someone cuts you off just remember punch him in the face no don't punch oh, him in the face no <laughs> no <laughs> um <laughs> just remember that they might be going through a hard time they might mm -hmm. be in their own world and you can just get another parking spot another 30 seconds here's a positive silver line to look at it they cut off that's another 30 seconds in your car before you find another spot where you can just like do a little guided body scan of like relaxing your eyebrows, your fingertips, just relaxing your body. You know, like sometimes when I, even when someone's running late, I'm like, okay, now I can just like take this time to just like think about the positive instead of being annoyed. Someone's late. I'm late sometimes too. We're all human where I'd want someone to like give me the benefit of the doubt of like, okay, I'm going to take this moment to just like chill, <laughs> listen to my favorite podcast. Listen to <laughs> Just like relax. Like I try to just recognize like there are so many outside factors in our lives that we don't have control over. And that is so, so, so difficult. Yeah. And there's things like in the world that are, that's going on, that's 
absolutely horrifically devastating. And so many people are battling so much more than we may ever know. But I think that something that has really helped me is like, what can I control right now within myself? Like, how can I be kinder to myself? And how can I do something for myself right now? Like, how can I make myself just a little bit more calm? Does that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's easier, but like, what's something that helps you feel calm and more in control of yourself? Is there an activity that you like to do? <clears throat> um, honestly, there's a couple things that I like doing. I like, I like listening to music a lot because it's like a moment where I can, I can reflect by listening to whatever the song is talking about. And it helps me, you know, it like helps trigger something in my head that reminds me of something else. And then I'm able to just kind of sit and, and, and kind of reflect over whatever it is that I need. Um, I like talking to my friends about it because I, I, I'm huge on communication, you know, and if, if something happens, I, I won't say it right away. And, and I, and I only have kind of limited myself from saying it right away because traditionally I've always had a very short fuse. And even though I might try and say something that's bothering me, I've, I've just the way you say things sometimes can come off wrong if you don't like take a second. And like you say, and, and just like, be aware of like, okay, why am I feeling this way? And like, take a second to like, think about it, think about it. There it is. That's why. And then say it. So that's something that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> it's just being with my dog. Say it again. And just being with Kiki. I have a question for you though, because you said you sometimes have a short fuse. Does it help you have more of an understanding and sort of forgiveness if someone else has a short fuse with you because you understand that? Um, or be more. It, it, depending on the situation, it might bring out my. And be like, so, it's it's been hard. There's moments where it's been a little tougher for me to like control it and hold it back. But uh, I mean, I've literally been working on specifically that for like over ten years at least. You know, free. It, yeah, it's been because it's it's been unhealthy, you know, in the past, and so I've. I've, I'm a completely different person than what I was like three years ago, even like last year. So it's, it's nice. It's nice to like look back and be like, Oh, wow. Come a long way. That's awesome. Yeah. And it, and also no one is perfect, you know, like nobody in the world is perfect. Yeah. And I think it's really cool when people reflect on who they are, who they want to be, what they want to work on, what they're proud of that they've improved. Yeah. I just, really cool journey that we all go through in life. So I think it's awesome that you shared that. Yeah. Um, Allie, you're okay. so cool, man. I miss you so much. I can't wait to see you in person, oh, which is yeah. uh, going to be pretty soon. Yes. So actually, I just saw a question too. Perfect. Someone asked me if Milo's <laughs> to Woodward camp with me. And Milo's actually going to be in Pennsylvania with me um, at Woodward Gymnastics Camp. I'm going to be there for parts of weeks two, three, and four. So he's going to be there. But Danelle and I are going to be there in um, uh, Woodward, California. But Milo yeah. won't be able to come because I can't fly with him because he's too big. So he'll be at the Pennsylvania one, but he won't be at the California one. But we'll be there. Um, are you going to be there week six? I think so. I think yeah, yeah, so I'll be there for so. week five and six. So we're going to be nice. overlapping. That's and Woodward. I'm really excited about that. Um, what is your favorite part about Woodward? Because you have been a VIP a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've only ever been to Woodward West, but uh, I went a couple of times. It's funny because I, the first time I ever went, I was living in LA. So it was only like a two hour drive. I got there and it was just like a normal gymnastics camp. But the people that were there, that they were working there, they became such good friends of mine that I, I would honestly go back and drive up to Woodward often, just randomly, rarely just to go see them and say hi, because, you know, the people that were there were, were just so nice. And that's always been my favorite part of, of, of Woodward, you know, being able to connect not only with the people working there, but also being able to connect with like the kids and stuff that go to, to train because it's, it's like such a, a, a small amount of time in their lives and in hours, but, we can make such a big impact literally by just like being, just being like, Hey, what's up? And like remembering a kid's name, 
you know, that's, that's my favorite thing to do. I love remembering kids' names because the third day when I, I like call them by their name, they like, they're like, yeah. yeah, that's my, it's my favorite thing to do. So sweet. Yeah. It's really sweet. How about you? So Sorry. I. Kiki wants to say hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, cute. I love you. Oh, no. I went to Woodward actually as a camper when I was young. No way. And, yeah, so funny. I went with um, a bunch of my teammates who went as a team, and I absolutely loved it. I, I love – I went to um, summer camp a lot when I was younger, and I just loved the idea that you know, friends, you do so many fun activities. And what I love about going to a gymnastics camp, specifically with Woodward, is that you do gymnastics, but you also are able to not only make so many friends, but do so many other fun activities. Yeah. And that's what's so cool is, like, you can play, like, all these different games, all these different stuff. And I think for gymnastics, yeah. one of those sports where you have to be so dedicated. And when I was eight, I stopped all the other sports because my gymnastics schedule got so yeah. intense. And I think that so much for an eight-year-old. And so what mm -hmm. I love about these kids being able to come to camp is they can do other stuff. And um, Woodward and I have been working together. I'm actually the gymnastics program designer. So we've been working together to bring, to kind of like um, enhance the gymnastics program and make it so when kids come for gymnastics, we obviously want them to improve their gymnastics and maybe learn some new skills. Most importantly, to have fun, make new friends. But we also want to teach them that they're more than just a gymnast. So we have we're implementing other fun activities and we're even going to have them do some kind of fun, like maybe cooking classes or baking or gardening. Um, yeah. And my cousin is actually going to be doing some yoga classes with the kids if they want to. So the kids can pick and choose what they want to do so they can try different stuff, but it's, they're able to also like, there's other fun activities like swimming and horseback yeah. riding and all that stuff. But if any of them are interested in, learning more about their mental health or different coping stuff. They can do yoga if they want to, because the yeah. ages are seven to 17. So yeah. as we know, media is getting younger and younger, and there yeah. might be some kids that are struggling with anxiety. So we want to yeah. give them different tools or different places that they can go to learn more about themselves and to better like cope if they're struggling with anxiety from social yeah. media or something at home. So we're very, very excited about that. And I also love the idea of like teaching kids to garden earlier. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like I get to garden with like the seven year olds. I think it's going to be so cute. That's going to be so amazing. I'm so excited. Yeah. What are you most excited about going this summer? Um, just being able to like play with the kids, you know, like my, my main goal, whenever I do coach in any capacity, like clinics or whatever, I always try and be the person that I felt that I needed when I was growing up, you know? And so being able to get the reaction from kids where, you know, they're initially, they see us as like, oh, adult, oh, like authority, you know, I can only speak to them this way. And then when you just like have an actual conversation with them, especially like in the middle of gymnastics where they, they're like, oh, I can, I can tell you what I'm thinking. Whoa, you know, like that's my favorite to actually yeah. be like, what do you feel? You know, tell me this and blah, blah, blah. That's my favorite. Um, I do have a question for you. Yeah. When was the last time you did anything gymnastics related as far as like you doing gymnastics? Like, have you done anything at all? Um, like me specifically going in the gym to do gymnastics? Yeah, to like flip around, yeah. I honestly haven't done anything since the tour. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, I haven't wanted to. It's nice to have a That's, break. And yeah. gymnastics is one of those sports where you can't do casually. Yes. What about you? I I have. I kind of I kind of have to just because um, you know, my goal as an actor is to be able to do like all, if not most, of my own stunts. So I've kind of like I've gone to uh, and just like upkept with specific things that will make it look really cool when I do them like on camera. Um, mm -hmm. But like I mean, not like super frequently either. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. really cool. awesome um yeah i think that you know i feel like the last year or so i've been more interested in watching gymnastics again and basically i feel like over the last few years i kind of wanted a little bit of a break from the sport which i wanted yeah. also after the 2012 olympics and i think that's pretty common when you're doing something oh, yeah. for long and oh yeah so 
Um, and so I found myself like a year ago starting to watch like the 96 Olympics again, 92 Olympics. And just like, awesome. I want to have that childlike feeling of watching it again and just being yeah. able to be inspired by them. So I started watching, cool. watch it with the eye of like a little kid yeah. and it's really inspiring for me. And I love, I love gymnastics so much. I love watching it. I have seen a couple questions asking if I'm going to be watching championships this weekend. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be watching. I'm really excited. I, I, as I said, I love it so much. It's been such a big part of my life. So it's always, really exciting to watch amazing gymnastics and it's such a special time for these gymnasts and I'm just really excited for them and wishing them all the best on this journey because it's also a scary time too there's so much pressure but it's just also a really special and beautiful time that they'll hopefully have amazing memories for the rest of their lives yeah going so to be cool. watching this weekend maybe I, I think I, I feel like I had to do something this weekend and I think it was it was like conflicting with the schedule i also don't i have no idea when championships is actually airing but um so it's well usually it's thursday through sunday okay. but <laughs> yeah that but usually it's thursday through sunday they might have changed i haven't looked exactly at the schedule but i am going to be watching it so I'm, I'm excited um do you remember your championships before either olympics oh yeah do you remember being nervous oh yeah i actually <laughs> i it was I was probably more nervous at championships and trials than I was at the Olympics, especially in 2016. Yeah. 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 I, it's interesting. So I, I feel like a lot of people would tell me that too. When I would talk to the girls that came before me, they would say that you might actually be more nervous for Olympic trials and going to training camp versus actually at the Olympics. Because by the time you get there, you've done all the competitions, you're so prepared yeah. and you can your routines in your sleep yeah. so yeah this time is really nerve-wracking too because they're not and this is in a positive way you shouldn't be in your yeah. perfect shape right now but there still might be kind of um you know getting through a little bit of some inconsistency stuff or maybe yeah. a, are still um they're still getting into that routine shape where they're getting their endurance and everything so sometimes yeah. it's a little nerve-wracking because you're planning to peak in July, when the July August, when the Olympics are, and so yeah. right now, though it feels like it's so close, they still have like a month and a half, maybe even mm -hmm. a little bit longer. And yeah. month and a half is so much time when you think about your training six days a week, sometimes twice a day. They still have a lot of time. But I also remember feeling like when I was competing, it was like things were a little bit more inconsistent than I wanted it to be, and which is okay and yeah. actually better than being yeah. like your best now and not peaking at the Olympics, but it just still like you as a perfectionist, you want to be yeah. like, I, I mean, that's was just about to say that, like you want to yeah. be on and perfect the whole time. You're like, you don't ever want to be <laughs> feeling consistent. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if a mistake this weekend, it's okay. And even if they have yeah. a mistake, it's okay. We're all human. But yeah. I think that there's still, it's like, you just want to have little improvements. And, and I remember like really focusing on the execution score at this point and like how it, I tried to improve it. But that was really the key that my coaches would have me look at is how can I improve that score to make it yeah. so that I compete, it's even better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's funny. Cause I also, I like, I remember when there was like a month and a half left there, like when I was training, I was like, that's no time at all. Like, it's that's right around the corner. No, oh, it is. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, I, mean, because I was, was going to ask you something and I can't remember what it is now. Um, I can't believe it's already been an hour, but we actually, this is going to end yeah. in a couple of days anyways. But I also, before, let me know when you remember the question, but I also wanted to say it's, I remember it was so crazy for me because like I dreamed of going to the Olympics since eight years old and it feels yeah. like so life is like you're it's in the back of your mind you're training for it but it's still so far away and you have that like calm of like it's still a few years away I'm fine and then when it gets so close it's just so surreal that it's finally yeah. here yeah and the battle is like taking it in but then also not taking it in too much that it makes you nervous like you can't yeah. let it sink around the Olympics because yeah. it's like crazy so yeah. it's such such a balance and it's so it is, I think the Olympics are, are so magical and so amazing. And so it yeah. just, it is such a truly special thing that I, we're 
I mean, we worked so hard, but I just feel very um, grateful that we were both able to be a part of it because it is so, it's just really cool. I it's agree. It's cool. I remember what I was going to say, but before uh, somebody said, ask her if she will marry me. No, she won't because she and I are supposed to get married. It's so awkward. I'm so sorry. No, um, but so when I, the for me, I had such a different experience in 2012 versus 2016. And it was mainly because in 2016, I knew that I was retiring, like no matter what. And so I was able to, well, first of all, it was also, as you said, very surreal. And it didn't actually fully hit me that I went to two Olympics and all that stuff until like years later. And then I was mm -hmm. like, damn, I, I did, you know, I don't know if you felt the same way, but did, Those did you... Did you have like a really massive uh, difference in how you approached and felt for 12 and 16? <sighs> yes. First, my brother tried yeah. calling me. That's okay, um, that's okay. Pause for a second. Yeah, but you're fine. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I remember in 2012, the biggest difference I can think about and is that in 2012, I didn't understand how many people would watch the Olympics and how much my life would change from it, which I think is actually more of a positive. But then yeah. in 2015, I understood how many people watched it and I felt so much pressure. They were both so hard. The year leading up to both Olympics was the hardest years of my training ever. It was so, I put so much pressure on myself. Um, and it was it was really 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 hard and really really stressful um but i feel like in 2016 the main difference was i felt like i learned to compete for myself and yeah. as you know it took me so many times to get the all-around medal and the fifth time was the charm for me i got it in the 2016 olympics but i put so much pressure on myself every single time that i had yeah messed up in the all around final and not gotten a medal. And so that to me was like, I did it for myself. And I, yeah. and I, 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 it's so hard when um, you're competing on such a world stage, because it's this pressure, you don't want to let people down. And I felt like, so, so, so nervous. And I, I mean, it, both of them were, were really nerve wracking. But I do remember for both of them, when I walked out into that arena, both times, I felt <laughs> so proud, so honored. It's like this feeling of being emotional because I can't believe that that younger eight-year-old who would watch the 1996 Olympics over and over again was here and doing it and thinking about maybe some eight-year-old out there is watching me compete and then she'll be at the Olympics one day too. And I just kept thinking about that and holding on to that. And that's really what got me through it. It was this sense of calm of like, I'm doing the best that I can. Um, but both times I felt extremely prepared and ready and the preparation was the key for me. What about yeah. you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, for me leading up to 12, everything just like it, everything fell into place very, very simply, very easily. And I, I, for us, we had this like rule in place that if you, if you uh, were in the top three in the all around and if you were like top three in like two events for championships and Olympic trials, you were immediately into the Olympic team. And me mm -hmm. and Orozco, we, we were immediately named to the Olympic team in 2012. And so that was like always like, oh, you know, I'm going to the Olympics and everything happened exactly the way it was supposed to. But in 2016, mm -hmm. I was named the alternate, you know, and, and it wasn't at all the plan. And then mm -hmm. unfortunately, Orozco hurt his knee and then they picked me to be on the team. And even at the Olympics in 2016, like I, I was supposed to do the all around or I was trying to do the all around. And then I've always had back issues that so started to flare up really badly. So I decided only to do three events. So again, not part of the plan, but I ended up with the two medals and I still to this day, it's my favorite picture of all time that I have of, of you and Simone, where you guys are watching me compete and like both of you had stopped your interviews and you were like leaning over the rail and like super excited to see me you have to send me that photo I ha yeah i have to find it and send it to you was it was that, honestly huh was that event finals it must have been after the yeah finals. yeah it was right at, it was literally right after four finals and both of you guys yeah. were just like watching me on high bar yeah, it was... yeah i remember like i don't want this to we probably have a couple minutes and then it will just cut off after the hour i can't believe how fast that went but 
Um, I remember the event finals is so cool because it's like really the only time that we get to interact with each other. I yeah. mean, you're not interacting because we're all focused on our events, but I do yeah. remember it's so fun to like be in the gym together yes. and see amazing things that you guys are doing. Um, it's really, really cool. It's like the balance of having a little bit of a distraction so you're not so nervous focusing on yourself and worrying yeah. too much and getting in your own head of like, oh my God, I'm competing at the Olympics right now. And yeah. then not distracted where you're not focusing enough so it's definitely such a balance but I loved being able to do event finals with the men at the same time it's just it's it's just cool but then it's, it's also nice. it's a different energy yes but it's also hard though because part of the the hardest part not the hardest part one of the hardest challenges about competing is that there it's a lot of hurry up and wait and you wait oh, a long God. time you're not very warmed up all this stuff and this is definitely <sighs> continued conversation because yeah, I don't want to on. off, but that's an interesting one is like to rest in the back gym. You uh -huh. already warmed up. Now your legs and everything is cold. You have to rewarm up. It's just like a very weird, it's, it's weird. like a exhausting so thing. Um, this was so awesome. I'm so glad that we did this. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love talking to you. You know, we always have very great conversations. So Thank this you. is awesome. I love it was great. I know. I can't believe that hour went by so fast. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for joining. And I saw Addison is going to be at Woodward Camp. So I'm excited to see Addison there. I, you know, it's funny. I was going to ask in the beginning, who's coming to Woodward Camp this summer? And then I realized that all of them should be in school right now. So hopefully none of them are watching the live. <laughs> have sisters or brothers or friends that are older or like someone that um, is watching that is paying for them to come. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe those are the people that are that are on here. Cool. Thanks guys so much for um, coming on here and chatting with us. Allie, so awesome. you have a great oh. day. I miss you so much. I can't wait to like hug you. I'm vaccinated. So we're, so, we're going to be safe. It's all good. <laughs> it was great seeing I'll you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I'll talk to you Bye. later. Morning. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.